Okay, hello everybody. Good morning. Um, it's Jessica Allen here from Suho, uh, bringing today. Um, it's Jessica Allen here from Suho. Do that every time. Bringing you a case study on air tightness testing for a house that we tested about a month ago. So, um, yep, CPD, email us if you would like your certificate of attendance. You know the drill. So this is the front of a house in Colonel Light Gardens that we tested. Um, it's a beautiful old home. Um, I think it was built in about, I, th I remember the client telling me it was about 100 years old, this house. Um, so early part of the 20th century. Um, the client got in contact with me um, him and his wife and his two children live in this house and they had been complaining of being quite uncomfortable um, from drafts in the winter and from the heat in the summer. So we, this is not an uncommon complaint in, um, in Adelaide. We hear this a lot from clients and this season I'm actually getting a record number of inquiries with exactly this same complaint. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I guess Adelaideans and Australians are seemingly waking up to the idea that there's actually something that can be done about it, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, the house is about, I believe about 100 years old, um, and there was an extension put on the back about 20 years ago. Um, and then when this family moved in, they also did a few little adjustments themselves. So it's had a bit of work done to it. Um, the original part of the house is heavy block work on a timber floor, and the extension is pretty standard construction, lightweight construction on um, oh, stud construction on a concrete slab. It's three bedrooms, one bathroom, one media room, and then the, the main living and kitchen, kitchen dining area. So it's a fairly standard family home. So this is the floor plan that I was given. These were the only plans that the client had. They didn't have anything more detailed or um, more up to date than this. Um, and they added some notes for me. It's Some of it's upside down because of the way that the, the, the pages have been annotated. Um, but that orange line there shows you where the split between the old and the new is. So <clears throat> the timber frame extension is this bit out the back and the old portion with the uh, block work on the timber floor is at the front. So the first thing I did, of course, if you've seen any of my webinars before, was I did the red pen test. The red pen test identifies where the air barrier is and it also, uh, when I'm measuring up in my PDF software Bluebeam, it allows me to um, find out how large the house is and it allows me to determine the equipment that I'm gonna need. So standard for a house, you don't normally need more than one fan, so it's usually fairly straightforward to work out the envelope area. Um, <clears throat> so this air barrier was quite straightforward, just followed the external walls of the house. There was nothing I had to worry about excluding. The garage was completely separate or the carport, so pretty simple. Um, the extension had a different ceiling height though, so when I'm working out the envelope areas, I have to account for that the additional height in the, in the rear of the house and also the additional um, wall here where the roof goes from, um, oh sorry, the back of the house was 2.6 metres, the front of the house was 3 metres, so there was a drop in the roof. So I have to allow for that when I'm um, working out the envelope area or the volume. So <clears throat> the square metre reach, the envelope area, if you haven't heard any of my webinars before, the envelope area refers to the square metre reach of the wall, the floors, walls, the floor and the roof all put together. So you get an idea of how um, big the house is based on the surface area. So this house added up in total to 413.8 square metres approximately. Now, like I said, these plans aren't perfect and I had to scale using a doorway on, a, on an assumption that that doorway was 900 wide, the, um, the door jam. So um, this calculation is not going to be perfect, but given the information I had, I did some measurements on site to verify the scale that I'd used on the PDF do, uh, drawing. And um, the, the measurements, although uh, they're approximate, they're pretty close. I'm confident that those numbers are pretty close. So, test day came, um, 
we like I'd done all the envelope area calculations, arranged a date with the client, and then came to site. Myself and my colleague Amber went to the house and we set up the fan for test day. So the fan was set up in the front door, just here. Um, we always have to set up the fan in an external doorway. So we had a couple of options um, and we chose the front door. Um, mostly because it was only a 2.4 door, which means it's easier to set up. A uh, 2.1 door, sorry, because if the doors get really high, it gets harder to fit the frame into the doorway. So chose that door because it was a nice um, 2.1 standard door. Um, so as we set up the house, we uh, closed all of the other external doors and windows and opened up all of the internal doors to allow the air to come to flow through the house and get equal pressure across the whole envelope. The fan was turned on and we brought the house down to 50 pascals of negative pressure. So what that means is when that when this fan gets turned on, it's sucking air through that fan out, in, out into the atmosphere. So it's sucking air from the house outside. So we're, that's called depressurizing. When you're decreasing the pressure inside a building, that's called depressurizing. And what that does is creates that pressure difference inside to outside, which means that the outside air then gets sucked in all the gaps and cracks in the, in the, in the building, and it makes them quite easy to identify. So that's what we did on this place and most tests. Most tests we depressurize um, and some tests we do both, but mostly we just depressurize. You don't have to do both most of the time. So what did we find? I've gone around the house in an anti-clockwise direction. You can see the floor plan I've got here. I've gone around in an anti-clockwise direction and I'm gonna show you the things that we found. So this client complained about the house being quite drafty and you're about to see why. So this was in the master bedroom. Um, they had this beautiful old heater that had been there for goodness knows how long. And you can see from the way that piece of paper is flapping about that there was a lot of air coming through that grill. Next minute, the client says, oh, that's not actually attached to the wall and pulls it out from the wall. And you can see this picture here is what was behind that grill and I mean that is a very very large um, hole in the building where there's air coming through and leaving constantly so that was one of the first things we found and it was um, yeah when they took off that grill it was quite a surprise but you know the happy thing about these sorts of large holes is that they're fairly easy to fix so moving on to the next room. So in this house, um, back when this house was built, chimneys were built in pretty much all of the places. There were some pretty standard construction practices and chimneys was one of them, fireplace, open fireplaces. So this house has got two of them and um, this was the original dining area in the original home and it was converted into a TV room. <coughs> so in this, um, instance the clients had actually if I go to the next slide yeah if so I'll just show you this picture here um, the clients had actually done a little bit of that identified that, that was going to be a problem um, these chimneys and they'd had a handyman around to do some um, ceiling work so further up the chimney it had been sealed off and they put a pillow up there to try and stop some of the air leakage which they did stop a significant amount of the air leakage but not all of it so I'll go to the back to my previous slide again and what they hadn't um, recognized is that air was coming down the chimney but there was also a gap at the back of the chimney this one here that was causing some pretty major issues you can see straight through there um, and that was something that they hadn't noticed uh, and this video here just shows that there's a little bit of air still coming through that chimney it's very high tech here, bits of paper. We've used toilet paper before to identify air leaks. Whatever will just move around in the wind. Um, next, so now we move into the main living area, which is the newer part of the house. Um, they, the clients still did say that, I mean, this part of the house is um, better than the front part, the old part, but they still said that they were finding some drafts in the back section. Um, and one thing that a lot of these 
Well, some of these issues, like gaps around doors and chimneys and things like that, are quite obvious, and you know that they're there without having a blower door test done, um, generally. So, some like a blower door test, the, the useful part of it is identifying leaks that you didn't know were there. So, in this instance, this was one of them. This client had installed a really nice gas fireplace in their new, uh, in their in their living room. Um, it was a really nice and cosy. They had it on before we got there um, to heat the house up so that we could get some better thermal images. So it was really nice and cosy in there. Um, but this is what we found: um, the air leaks that we found around the perimeter of the gas fire was something that the client didn't expect. So there's a penetration behind that fire that hasn't been sealed up when the when the trades came to install it. So that's the kind of thing that we find that people sometimes don't expect. <coughs> next. So e next to that fireplace, there was um, uh, some double doors, some glass doors. And either side of those doors, there were these cracks in the, the corners next to the door and they also leaked. So over time the house has moved from when this extension was done and the, the plasterboard and the skirting boards have come apart meaning that there's air from outside coming freely through that gap. Similar story on the other side. I didn't get any video footage of this, but similar story here. There was air coming through this little section here. Um, these are the glass doors that the client had installed. Um, no real problem. There was a seal there that was effective. Um, the seal, the brush seal that was between the two doors connected to each other. So there was actually, sometimes we find that when door seals are installed, um, in, you know, yes, the door seal is, in, is installed, but they don't actually connect with the door frame or with each other. Um, in this instance, the door frame, the, the seal worked perfectly fine. Um, there's a little bit of daylight at the top there, not a huge issue. Um, I mean, compared to some of the other leaks, it's really an insignificant thing. We don't need to really worry about it. The brush seals, there was a tiny bit of air coming through because brush, the brush is obviously not um, airtight, so it stops the dust from coming in, but it doesn't stop air. But it still does a pretty good job. Um, here are some other issues we found, um, some small, some not so small, um, in the living area. There was all of the power points, um, and you'll find this in most places, the power points all leak. And although there's only a small little hole in the building fabric, if you've got lots of them, then they all add up. All the little holes add up to big, uh, one big hole. So, um, um, yeah, that can be one area that people also don't expect. Uh, this is the rain tool in the kitchen. This had an actual, uh, actually had a fairly good damper on it, so there wasn't much air coming through there at all. That was not too bad. There was some air coming from behind the kitchen, so um, the kitchen, the fridge. So there was some penetration back there, probably electrical or something that had happened during the renovation because this is the wall. This fridge backs onto the wall between the old and the new. So something's gone on behind there. It's hard to say exactly what without taking everything out and, you know, really having a good investigate. Um, but there was air coming from behind the fridge. And um, here under the sink where the plumbing um, plumbing and electrical comes through, there was air coming through there as well. So again, these leaks are fairly typical. This one, I have to say I haven't seen this one before. We moved through to the laundry now and the clients, these clients had installed a European laundry um, in what I believe was part of the bathroom. Um, they've separated out the bathroom and created a separate laundry in, in a cupboard. Um, and I could feel some air coming from under the um, under the doorway and I couldn't work out. I just put my hand under, looked under, and this is what I saw. So the tradesman who installed this laundry cut the sheet a bit too small and thought, oh well, bung it up there anyway and they left a good inch gap um, from where air can move from the house up into the roof space and vice versa. So um, that's not ideal and this is the kind of 
you know, lack of attention to detail that air tightness testing is attempting to, I guess, kind of weed out. Um, if air tightness testing is done before handover happens, then this sort of thing will need to be fixed. Um, you know, once air tightness testing is part of the building code or some, you know, something like that, this sort of thing won't happen. Um, unfortunately, these clients um, learnt the hard way, I guess. Again, fairly easy to fix, but access up here was a bit tricky. Um, it's very tight, so getting up there might be a bit hard, but it is fixable. Um, here's a little video to indicate how much air was coming through that gap. This little bit of paper was just sitting up there in the container and we noticed it flapping around so we, we just took a video of it. Um, so it's not an insignificant amount of airflow that's coming through there, it's quite a lot. <clears throat> Moving to the bathroom, this was one another area where um, there wasn't much air leakage. So that's a good thing, bathroom exhaust fans are a fairly common culprit for air leakage. They often don't have dampers on them, but this one seems to. Um, there wasn't much air coming through it at all, so that was good. Um, window leaks, so moving through to bedroom two, um, one of the kids' bedrooms. This one, um, double hung timber windows in a house this old. They're generally pretty leaky, all of them, um, just by design and by how old they are. If they're movable, if they're openable, they usually leak and sometimes rattle a little bit. So there are some solutions for these sorts of window designs and we offered these solutions to the client. Um, it can be tricky putting a seal on a window like this because they're movable, but that is a product that I have discovered um, that works quite well on these windows and doesn't bunch or tear or um, you know come off when you open and close the window. So um, I recommended that product to this client. Um, another thing that's really common in old places is these vents and I'm sure if you've got an old place then you will have them. My parents have got about five or six in their place. Um, so in the past we've taken Perspex covers and covered these sorts of vents up for clients. We didn't do any of that work for this client but um, identified that as an air leakage pathway that is fairly typical of older houses. Um, Bedroom one, similar issue with the windows. Uh, there was a second chimney in this bedroom here, which unfortunately, I swear I photographed, but I can't find the photos, unfortunately. Um, similar, not as bad as the chimney in the media room, though. Still leaky and had the pillow up there and the ceiling measures that had happened previously. So there was um, a significant reduction in how much air was coming through that chimney. Um, but there was still uh, there was still air movement coming through there. This house also had an attic, so the client had converted a part of their roof space into a storage area, which um, I think is pretty cool. Um, <coughs> this door here, because a couple of issues in terms of insulation and thermal comfort and things like that with this attic. One, the first one is that this doorway this latch or hatch is not insulated and the perimeter isn't sealed. So when that hatch is closed, there's a, a large amount of insulation actually throughout the whole attic. There's no, oh, maybe underneath the floor. I think there was insulation between the floor of the attic and the ceiling of the, of the house. So the rest of it was insulated, but the, the part where the hatch was, but there's no insulation on there. And there's also, like I said, no seal around the outside. So air is leaking up and uh, between the attic and the house. I poked my head up there, got up on the ladder and turned the light on, poked my head up there and there is this um, daylight here which is actually a whirly bird. So that is ventilating this space which is an important feature because otherwise this place could, this um, space in the house could be um, susceptible to mold and you know unhealthy, an unhealthy environment in there if there was no ventilation. So um, that's not a bad thing necessarily. Um, it's it's a it's a good thing, um, but if this is not sealed, then that's providing a lot of air um, 
that can you know it's it's a it's a it's a pathway that air can move um and it's it's worth space you don't necessarily think about it impacting your your thermal comfort but when this section here like i said hasn't got a seal on it then you're going to get air movement um the other thing is this section here i think this is an access panel to the rest of the roof space and this wasn't sealed either so this unsealed door even when it's closed is going to be um, allowing air through down into the house and vice versa um, generally across the entire house there was a ducted um, uh, evaporative I believe it was evaporative cooling system um, the client had quite rightly identified that this was going to be each vent was going to be causing a few problems so he went and bought covers and sealed every single vent in the house um, which was very sensible when we went to do the test there were some of them that were falling off so you can see by how much that is moving that every one of those vents is going to be causing a fair amount of trouble in terms of air leakage and thermal comfort So we also took the thermal camera and took a few images for the client. So here um, you can sort of see that there's, you can see the framing of the roof. Um, there's a tiny bit of thermal bridging going on. This is in the back section um, in the new area. Not a huge issue. Um, some of the other images show a little bit more clearly that the insulation in the extension was potentially a little bit patchy and bunched up if that insulation had been put up there you know 10 20 years ago it's quite possible that it's it's been compressed and moved around or you know they the clients if there's any electrical work done installing down lights then the insulation gets moved around and bunched up so <coughs> you can see that there's a few little patchy sections there where it looks like the insulation is either bunched up or not not fully in contact with the plasterboard um, the problem with fixing this in this particular home was that the roof structure was a flat roof so getting in there to replace the insulation if it was old or fix it up meant get it's a fairly large job taking off roof, roof sheets and other such things so um, you know it's what seems like a simple I mean it's simple enough I suppose um, but for some people that might be off-putting to have to pay someone to do that or you know put in the work get on the roof things like that um, here's an image of the bathroom exhaust fan you can see there's not much happening there's no discoloration around that exhaust fan so there's not a great deal happening there um, which supports the um, the finding that there wasn't any air leakage coming out of it this is one of the vents with the cover coming off, the air conditioning vents. So you can see that the splash marks around this vent, is purple streaming out from that vent, that shows air leakage. So that one's a fairly obvious and significant leak. So the results. So all of those images and videos that we found um, when the client told me that his house was drafty, that now you can see why they were feeling a little, um, a little breezy. Um, the results for oopsie the results for this house was quite high so the average australian home according to the study done by the csiro about five years ago is 15.4 air changes per hour um, in south australia we're a little bit better than that at 8.5 air changes per hour at 50 pascals um, this house achieved 22.2 air changes per hour at 50 pascals now I have to put a disclaimer around that saying that um, the envelope area and volume calculations are not 100% spot on like I mentioned at the beginning because the plans weren't 100% spot on um, but the indication that the indication that these numbers give us is like I said I'm fairly confident that they're fairly accurate um, so there's two scores here, the air changes per hour and the permeability or cubic meters per hour per square meter score. Um, you can see that they're quite similar. They're just based on two different things. Air changes is based on the volume of the house. Permeability is based on the envelope area of the house. So 
both terminologies are used in terms of residential building. Um, so 22.2 air changes and a permeability of 20.5 cubic metres per hour per square metre of air was leaking out of this house. So in summary, it's a really high score. Um, so the great thing about, like I said, this result is that there is lots that can be done to fix up. There's lots of really sort of big bang for buck targets that um, I gave the client in my report um, and they are currently working through the, my list of suggestions. So there were areas in this house that didn't pose a problem. So the downlight penetrations in the extension were good. There was no leaks coming from, from those. The exhaust fans in the bathroom and the timber floor in the existing home was one that um, an area that didn't show any air leakage, which is quite significant because I've been in houses in a, sim a similar construction where there's been an old house and then an extension built on the back. And the timber floor in the new section was like an, um, an air hockey table. There was just air coming through all of the floorboards. So the fact that the floor in this um, in this home, in the, in the older part, was um, had some good integrity was a really good thing because that's probably, would be probably one of the most tricky things to fix. Um, so yeah, the client, like I said, is currently working through the list of suggestions and um, hopefully when they're done, we'll have a nice sit down and have a chit chat about what they did and what the improvements were. We might do another test, find out what the improvement is and um, report back. So watch this space and um, I'm gonna chase the client up on that one. So that is the findings. Um, this webinar is now finished. That's what we found when we did um, a blow door test on this one particular house. Um, I'm sure many of those things are recognizable to many of you. So um, if you have any questions about your home or if you want um, a blow door test done on your place, then get in touch with us, air at suho.com.au and we'll be happy to give you a quote. Um, if any of you are here for Green Star CPD points, then get in touch with us at info at suho.com.au and we'll give you your certificate of attendance. So I'm going to check if there are any questions now. Um, I haven't been able to check while I've been doing the webinar. Um, which product, Natalie, which product is it that works well on those kind of windows? Um, it's like a... It's like a piece of plastic that's in a V. I have to find the name of it. Um, it's a piece of plastic that's in a V and you stick one side of it to the window and then this side kind of extends out to the size of the gap and it can be a smaller gap or a larger gap. It kind of is flexible and extends out to the size of the gap. Um, and because it's plastic, not foam, it doesn't bunch up and scrunch up as you move the windows. Um, I don't have the name of it, Natalie. I think I've got your email address so I can email it to you if you like. Um, if anyone else would like to know what product it is, get on to me at air at suho.com.au and I'll, I'll forward you the information. It's not a product you can actually get in Australia though. It's hard to get. Um, I found out about it through a, another client whose house I tested and he had had to order it off of eBay from America or something like that. Um, it's not easy to get your hands on, but it is an excellent product. Um, no worries, Natalie, I'll, I'll email that to you. Um, okay, well, thank you everybody for joining me this morning to listen to my webinar on what we found when we tested an older residential home. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.